To understand George, you have to understand his early childhood. He had a pretty hard upbringing and start, and really no real parents. And he came to Australia and he left England. He had to work his way up from a farmhand on soldier settlements. He was born in 1910 and he knew his mother. She was a housekeeper. I don't think he knew his father. And his mother, being a handmaid, uh, didn't have a place for him to live, so he lived with his um, grandparents. So he went to school till the age of 13. Then he left and had to stand on his own two feet. He did well at school, but he could have gone on, but financially he wasn't in a position to. Yet he had ability. And I think he thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to help other young people to go further in their education and to fulfill their capabilities? The Big Brother movement, which had just started, sponsored him and others to come to Australia. So he left at the age of 16 to come to Australia. He had four pounds in his pocket. When he arrived in Melbourne, he had two pounds. He came really to Australia without friends, without money, without connections. And he went to the Western District to work on a dairy farm. And that was hard work. He learned to milk the cows in the morning and the night and repair things. After, I think, two or three years on the dairy farm, he thought he'd try wheat farming. So the big brothers moved him to a wheat farm in Wimmera. He was there for about a year. Then he moved to the Mallee, which was hard going. And he'd be looking at ploughing the fields with the bullocks or the horses, mending the fences, uh, bagging the wheat, sowing the wheat bags. So it was real physical work. And he did that during the Depression. In the weekends, he worked at the local service station. He loved to fiddle with mechanics and machinery. He started repairing cars at the workshop, at the garage, and reading magazines about cars. And so in a very self-determined way, he worked out what he wanted to do in life. He started to uh, go to the Gordon Institute of Technology at night. He did very well at it. And when he finished his course, they asked him to become a lecturer. So he sought out the opportunities to improve himself through, through education. So he's somebody who has a very strong belief in the power of education to change a person's circumstances. In those days, all garden hoses were rubber hoses and they were made by a company called Pope. They were just starting to have uh, plastic hoses, but they didn't have a fitting to put it on the tap or on the sprinkler system. And he invented a brass fitting to put on the tap for the plastic hose and a brass fitting at the other end to connect it with a spray, to rotate around and spray the garden with water. And he called that netta. And he developed that for 25 years. He uh, spoke to his uh, ANZ manager, Roger Darville said to him, look, why don't you, you're wanting to give a bit of money away, and you are, why don't you set up a capital sum so that it will go on forever? George, being a modest person, said, I don't want to be involved in giving money away and people knowing it. I don't want to have people approaching me for money. Roger said, he was a governor of the Ian Potter Foundation, and they could administer uh, George's foundation if he set one up for them. So he gave $30,000 and set up the George Alexander Foundation. He bought a place, say, three or five miles out of uh, surface paradise, just farmland, and lived there. And then 
Five years later, the property developers came along and said, we'd like your farm. Paid him multitude of what he'd paid. So he kept enough to live on and buy the next farm and sent the rest to his foundation. He conveyed his general thoughts to the governors of where he'd like the money spent, mainly to help those that may not have fulfilled their capability unless they'd had some financial assistance. As time transpired, he focused on the environment. He'd worked on the farms, so he was interested in water conservation, the flora and fauna, the preservation of the Australian landscape. And he also wanted to help uh, young people, especially from rural areas, especially from working class families. That foundation's now grown from his $30,000. I think it was about $15 million when he passed away in 2008. The balance of his estate went to the foundation, made it about $30 million. That was 2008. It now gives away annually about $2 million in scholarships at about 12 universities and technical colleges. So from that idea he had and that early giving, he's now providing one of the largest private scholarship schemes at universities and technical colleges in Australia. The vision is to enable young people throughout Australia to have access to educational opportunities and to succeed where otherwise they mightn't have the financial ability to do that. The way in which we achieve that is through a scholarship program and a fellowship program. There's an emphasis on, on giving an opportunity to someone who otherwise may be denied a particular education or ability to further their qualifications in some way because they simply couldn't afford it. The George Alexander Foundation invests in young people um, and young people will give you significant payback over their lifetime. And in my opinion, it's the best investment that we can make as philanthropists um, is in uh, the enhancement and development of our young people. The corpus of the foundation or the money of the foundation is invested very, very well. Um, it will exist forever. It genuinely is a, a trust that will exist in perpetuity. And as the value of that um, investment corpus continues to grow, so too we'll be able to support more and more young people. Um, and we now have, I think, approximately a thousand scholars or thereabouts that have been supported uh, through the George Alexander Foundation Scholarship Program since about 2002. Um, just fast forward 20 years, that thousand people might be two and a half thousand people. Education obviously is a uh is a way of improving your circumstances, improving your ability to earn a, an income, uh, improving your ability to be, be happy actually, to realise your potential. And so recognising how corrosive it is to miss out on educational opportunities, it's an obvious thing I suppose for someone like George Alexander especially, who was very conscious of the benefits he got from education, to want to encourage people in, in that particular direction. The scholarship winners that we get are people who are interested in community, who've achieved academic excellence, who are happy to undertake some kind of leadership role, possibly have a specialist interest in uh, environmental issues. It is hoped that uh, the winners of the scholarship will, like George Alexander himself, have an interest in contributing to the community, feeds in, I think, to George's vision, which is one of, you know, having a vigorous interest in life, wanting to better oneself, as it were, and taking an interest in those around you and being prepared to give your time, your mind, to lead people in their various student endeavours. I just continue to be impressed by the quality of young people um, their desire to improve themselves, their desire to really pursue their passion, but also their desire to clearly make a difference in their community as well. Um, it's very, very um, hopeful, I think is, is the way I describe my feeling after meeting many GAF scholars, but then those GAF scholars that are supported through the program um, move off into their own careers and are genuinely now spread all over the world. But it's significant to me, and I think significant to the Foundation, that 
in supporting those young people, their impact and their influence then spreads right around the world. Because as sure as someone's operating here in Melbourne, or as they're operating in New York, or in London, or Mexico, or wherever it might be, they are then having an impact in those communities, and those communities are benefiting from the initial investment made in those people as GAF scholars. If you, if you asked uh, George what he wanted to be remembered for, he'd say, I don't want to be remembered for anything. I, I'm just a pommy that came out here to a great country and got lucky. But he said, in giving the scholarships, I hope I'm planting seeds that will grow into plants or an acorn that will grow into a tree and that that tree will give back to the community. So he said, that will be my lasting heritage.